uh, thank you uh, for agreeing to being interviewed. You're welcome. Can you tell me a bit about yourself? Um, well, I'll tell you what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm chief of the English publishing and library section at the UN in Vienna. Uh, and the English part of that covers English translation and editing. Um, so I've got quite a motley um, assembly of, of units that I'm in charge of. Um, luckily, I, I'm still doing a certain amount of language work. Um, in my translation section, I've, at the moment, I've got one translator, hoping to have a revisor soon. So I'm revising that translator's work and also doing the quality control of all the contractual work that's done outside, um, as well as all the management things that go with the job. Can you tell me how you got started in your career? Yes, well, I studied um, Russian and French, but mainly Russian, um, at university. Mm -hmm. And after that, I did a postgraduate diploma at what is now West Westminster University. Um, I had to also do Polish and Czech then, which unfortunately I haven't used since. Um, after I did that, I was at home for a while just sending off CVs and not really hearing very much for about six months. Mm -hmm. But finally I got a contract with um, the International Telecommunication Union in Geneva, and that led on to another contract with the International Labour Office, and then one with the World Health Organization, then I spread my wings and, and did some contracts in Vienna, Vienna for the um, United Nations Industrial Development Organization and the International Atomic Energy Agency. And when I was working at the International Atomic Energy Agency, I met my husband. So um, that was when I decided to take a permanent job in Vienna. So I worked for the Atomic en Energy Agency for a couple of years and then decided that um, because I didn't like the subject, the only way to really get out was to start having babies. So, <laughs> so that's what I did. I, I had my first baby and uh, resigned from that job. And when, when my second child was around the age of two or so, mm -hmm. I started going freelance again. Um, and then I, I freelanced for several years in Vienna and uh, then took the United Nations uh, examination and uh, started working at the UN in Vienna as a revisor. So that was about 13 years ago. And uh, then my job developed more into the management side. Very interesting. <laughs> what qualities do you need to have in order to be a good translator? Well, I would say um, you have to be very intelligent to start off with and to have highly developed analytical skills. Um, and a very good grasp of logic. Um, of course, your, your foreign languages have to be very good, but I would say that even more important than that is loving your own language, um, really being very enthusiastic about, about words, getting an almost physical pleasure from, from reading and enjoying the, uh, the nuances and the distinctions between words. Um, Apart from that, I think uh, you do have to be a good team player. Um, because the relationship between a translator and a reviser can be a little tricky, you have to have a lot of sensitivity. Um, the word humility has been banded about today, but it's, it's true, you have to be able to accept criticism. And to when you read the um, revisions, you have to be able to take, not take it personally but just to see it as a kind of private tuition that's very valuable and to go on from there. Um, but at the same time you need to have enough self-confidence to be able to, to have your work criticised. So, um, yeah, and, and to be a good team player because you're, you're liable to be working in a team as a praise writer and um, you have to be able to pull your weight and not get too nervous and, and be considerate to your fellow team members. Thank you. What are the most interesting aspects of what you do? Any interesting episodes? Um, well, covering meetings is always very interesting. Um, you're often there quite late at night and you might be asked to translate a paragraph of a resolution or a whole resolution under, under great pressure. And that's when the adrenaline starts flowing and it's very stimulating and it gives you a great sense of satisfaction to be able to do a good job
quickly. Um, but that's most of the time we're just uh, covering quite a large range of subjects, and the subjects in themselves are very interesting. So you really feel at the centre of things um, and in contact with you know, these international deliberations. So that's what I would find most interesting. Do you have any tips for budding linguists? <clears throat> um, well, as I was saying in, in the um, talk today, I would definitely take a, out a subscription to The Economist and read it as much as, as, uh, as I can. Um, I think reading is the most important thing to develop your, your sense of the, the flow of the language and, and the rhythm and a feeling for the distinctions between words. It's so important to get the, the precise word that, that you're looking for. How important are linguists in your organisation? They're not important, they're vital. Um, the UN couldn't carry on its business without linguists. Um, our six UN languages cover, cover most of the, the major language groupings in the world and they also cover great cultural d differences as well. And I suppose the, the translators are almost cultural mediators as well as linguistic mediators. Um, so I don't think the business of the UN could proceed the way it does without the translators and the interpreters. Do you use your language skills on a daily basis? Yes, despite the fact that I'm, uh, I've become more of a manager, um, I'm still revising, I'm still doing quality control, I'm not really doing any translation anymore, but I love correcting other people's work. <laughs> Do you have the opportunity to build on the skills that you already have, such as learning new languages? Um, I don't really have the time personally, but the translators do um, go to classes that are given or else immersion courses in, in the different countries. Um, there's a very good course in Salamanca that we've sent people on. Uh, so yes, that, that's a very important part of the training program to allow people to acquire new languages. Thank you very much, Sunny. Thank you.